yes, but we struggled with it for a very long time. Mm. And it wasn't until I, I called uh, John Butt to ask him about his opinion, because um, he did say, oh, well, people might look odd at it or look at you a bit oddly. But he kind of agreed that in terms of form, the partita number one is the oldest form of the whole set. All the other ones are much more contemporary to, let's say, the first uh, beginning of the 18th century. Whilst this really harks back generation before, like, for example, Walter, mm. Sonatas, whatever. Um, so, uh, the, the story starts maybe 2000 and, uh, I can't remember, was it 9 or 10, and I went for an audition in Amsterdam to um, a foundation who started to buy old instruments and give them to students or young professionals uh, who would pass their audition to use for a certain period of time. And I had a lovely violin by uh, Francesco Ruggeri, <coughs> Uh, from Cremona for about nine years and this was um, a violin that I used in recordings of Carbonelli, of uh, Giovanni Giornovic and then I had to give it back um, so I was kind of looking for another violin and uh, I found this stunning violin by Giovanni Tononi and uh, the price tag was eye-watering <laughs> but I thought I spoke to some people and they said we could you know, to help you with that, because it is an investment. Investment. You're not actually asking for money. You're asking for somebody to buy shares of an instrument, um, eff effectively. Well, the the bow that I have in particular is by perhaps the, be the best maker we have of of uh, early bows, who lives in the Hague. Uh, I have one of his kind of late Baroque bow that I've used and also late 18th century, early 19th century uh, that I've used recently in the Mendelssohn Concerto. Uh, his name is uh, Luis Emilio uh, Rodriguez and then Carrington is uh, his wife's name and he lives in The Hague but uh, if you see him he would just look like Jesus from Mexico because <laughs> uh, he, he came to Europe um, some time ago maybe in the 70s, 80s and, and developed his name and best of um, violinists, I think Monica Haggard and Andrew Manzi, they, they all used his bows. So in answer to your question, you can, you, I think ideally you should have a different bow for a different era. Oh, I would disagree. I think the, the most exciting groups nowadays do tend to come from France. Uh, that may be because the government funding is available to them and you can start up, but, but I, I met people there that were playing only viols, never cello, or only harpsichord, never a piano. So they're really, um, they're really proud of their culture and they really uh, pass that on to new generations and younger, younger players. So you have music schools, uh, as in a different entity, different building that you go to. Not you don't have music as a part of your normal school, but if you're interested, you go there, and it's not expensive. You don't have to pay forty pounds per per lesson. It's there for everyone. Um, maybe you pay something per term, but uh, you can choose if you want to play on a modern instrument or if you want to. Uh, if they have teachers, if you want to study on a on a baroque. An instrument such as viol or, or a lute or a fiorbo mm -hmm. instead of a guitar. So it's very it's very different setup that allows uh, people to start uh, music sooner. Well, I guess when you're a student, you you fret about everything. You have to over prepare because otherwise, they they always tell you um, if you don't practice. So I mean, if you practice the performance will be good. It's not going to be bad. If you're, if you're prepared, if you know how to, if you have a good contact with your instrument, no matter what happens, unless you're really you know, in pain or uh, un incapable of playing, it's going to be good. It might not be fantastic, but it's going to be good. If you don't practice, you can't do anything about it. It's going to be bad. Just accept it. Um, but there's also 
another element which you can't have when you're a student or a younger professional, which is past experience. You know, you've been there. And I think we all lost that uh, during, during lockdowns because we just didn't know what, what being on stage is, how to behave, how to uh, mentally be in a particular moment. Because what is technique on an instrument then uh, being able to do something precisely at the right moment that you need to? 